Nighttime in St. Petersburg, Florida, and the national semifinals continue here at the Final Four as Michigan State and Duke are about to collide for the second time this season, but this time for the right to advance to the national championship game, where on Monday night, the winner of this one will take on the Connecticut Huskies, already advancing with a 64-58 win over Ohio State. Jim Nance, Billy Packer, back here courtside. Again, great to have you with us. And Billy, we have something unique here. It's only the third time since the tournament went to 64 teams that we have a one versus two matchup in a semifinal game. It was Duke back in 86, Coach K's first Final Four team. This will be his eighth trip to the Final Four today. And then three years back, Kentucky, the two, knocked off number one UMass and Marcus Camby by seven. Looks and like number two is in pretty good shape there, doesn't it? In fact, overall, if you include regular season meetings, in the one versus two matchup, the two has won the last four times. Absolutely. How about the Blue Devils, winners of the East Regional? Well, they really have a great inside presence in Elton Brand, the National Player of the Year. If you're going to let him get the ball down that low, you're in the National Player of the Year. If you're going to let him get the ball down that low, you're in serious trouble. And, of course, this is one of the most prolific three-point shooting teams we've ever seen, right at 40% on the year from the outside. They also are great at the transition game. Their defense becomes their offense. There's Battier posting up for the outside three off the steal. And Michigan State mastered the bracket in the Midwest. How did they do it? Well, they're one of the toughest basketball teams I've seen in some time. There you see Patin Cleves with a little bit of a headache, but he came back into the ball game. This is a great rebounding basketball team. Everybody attacks the glass. And they have a man coming off the bench in Granger, hitting three-point shots. It's exactly what they need if they're going to play against this Duke defense. All right, the Duke trap. We'll see it today. What about it? In many different ways, Duke plays very aggressive defense. Here we see the 1-3-1 half-court zone trap. They pick up. They're down in the corners. They know how to rotate and overplay the passing lanes. And when they go ahead and make a steal, you'll see in this half-court set, it immediately becomes defense, offense, three-point shot. That's what they love to do to get those great runs they have. All right, the coaches, Mike Krzyzewski and Tom Izzo, and their keys to this matchup. Well, the Duke and Michigan State, a pair of number one seeds, the top two teams in the rankings, they'll meet next. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Men's National Semifinal Game is sponsored by Pontiac Transport, Microsoft, Budweiser, and by Enterprise. Hello and welcome to the NCAA Final Four and for tonight's second round semifinal game between the Duke University Blue Devils and the Michigan State Spartans. Let's meet the starting lineups. At forward for Duke, listed at 6'8", a sophomore from Birmingham, Michigan, wearing number 31, Shane Battier. At forward for Michigan State, listed at 6'7", a senior from Goseal, Michigan, wearing number 44, Jason Klein. At forward for Duke, listed at 6'6", a junior from St. Louis, Missouri, wearing number 23, Chris Carwell. At forward for Michigan State, listed at 6'8", a senior from Flint, Michigan, wearing number 13, Antonio Smith. At center for Duke, listed at 6'8", a sophomore from Pinksville, New York, wearing number 42, Elton Brand. At center for Michigan State, listed at 6'8", a sophomore from Troy Wood, Ohio, wearing number 34, Andre Hudson. At guard for Duke, listed at 6'3", a senior from Anchorage, Alaska, wearing number 21, Trajan Langdon. At guard for Michigan State, listed at 6'2", a junior from Flint, Michigan, number 12, Mateen Cleves. At guard for Duke, listed at 6'2", a sophomore from Augusta, Georgia, wearing number 5, William Avery. And at guard for Michigan State, listed at 6'3", a sophomore from Flint, Michigan, wearing number 14, Charlie Bell. The head coach for Duke is Mike Krzyzewski. And for Michigan State, Tom Izzo. 
Michigan State's first Final Four since 1979 for the Blue Devils, their fifth appearance in the Final Four in the 90s alone. And they defeated Michigan State back on December the 2nd, 73-67, racing to a quick lead in that one. Billy, how about your Packer points? Well, the heavyweights on the inside. We talked about Elton Brand being a powerful guy. Both of these guys weighing at about 260, and Antonio Smith holds his ground very well. That will be interesting inside. The unknown soldier, A.J. Granger and Jason Klein, they have got to come big for Michigan State today from the outside with their shooting. And the Blue Bombers. Duke University field goal shooting percentage leaders at the three point line shooting right at 40% as a team. You have got to stop their three point shooting. The bench brigade, I'll tell you what, Michigan State comes off that bench with productive scoring. They've out handled everybody that they've played this year but two teams off the bench. They are extremely explosive with guys coming off, particularly Granger and Peterson. The Blue Devils have won their four tournament games by an average of 30 points. And Billy, you've been asked it all week. How can Michigan State stay with them? I think that if they're confident enough to stay with the way they normally play, they don't have to make big adjustments. The key is not to allow Duke University to get into any of those spurts. David Libby, Curtis Shaw, John Cowell. The officials and Duke has first possession. Rand stole that tap. Cleves, let's look at the matchups that they've got out here early. It's going to be Hudson on Brand, giving up some power inside. Brand fade away yeah. for the first two. How will State start in this game? They were down 13-0 in their first meeting against the Devils back in December. Leaving Smith open. Outside, not known as an outside shooter, and Brand clears it. This is an interesting matchup. Hudson's given up an awful lot of power on Elton Brand. Matty A. And now a three by Avery. What a start. Blue Devils already five zip. They are so explosive. Here's a nice matchup here, too. We've seen some great guard play in that first game defensively. Let's see what Avery can do with Cleves. Mateen has that ability to turn that shoulder on a dribble and penetrate. Battier not paying a lot of attention to Smith. Good pass. Bell baseline should have had it. Klein chases it down. Battier kind of playing a one-man zone, letting Antonio Smith roam. That means for driving and penetration, Battier is a guy who can draw charges and block shots to be tough. Klein off the feed from Hudson. And Tom Izzo's team will not see anything like that 13-0 deficit. In game one, although they did give up a quick five in this one. Important for Klein to get off early in this ball game, scoring wise. Brand. I don't think there's any way Hudson can stay with Brand down inside. And a turnover right off the leg of Cleves. Everyone thought it would be Smith on Brand. I think they're going to have to go to that. What Tom Izzo might want is the fact that Smith not get in foul trouble early. This is a tough matchup right here, too. Klein Avery. Avery off a quick for him. Battier fouled outside. And uh, Smith, you want to keep him out of foul trouble? That's one well, right there. Jim, I don't like this matchup at all by Michigan State because Battier is too quick for Smith, and he can take him outside with a three-point shot and drive by him. And then you have Hudson on the inside trying to handle Brand. He's too think, physical, right? I think Tom Izzo's got to get out of that in a hurry. Brand again, double-teaming. Brand, what a move. Uh, he is just too strong for him inside. They've got to make a change there. Six points for Elton Brand, 9-2 to two Duke. Your best putting a body on him, not trying to block his shot, just play position defense. Line jumper. Huge shot right there for, for Michigan State. They've got to get him to make some jump shots. Wow, Battier, he's wild lately. And a rebound by Smith, and a big one. Brand was up there for it also. Bell, two-pointer. Michigan State doesn't mind running because they hit the glass so well. Smith misses, and Brand is fouled by Bell. You've got to hit these outside shots, Jim. We talk about taking advantage when you play against Duke. These outside shots are important, and look at how quickly 
Tom Izzo says, I'm bringing Peterson in the game. He's my sixth man. I usually like to wait a little bit longer than this, but Peterson in the game quickly. He was their number one man in the Midwest bracket. Most outstanding player of the Midwest Regional was Morris Peterson. And even, Line is out. Even though he's a sixth man or called the sixth man, the best in the country because that's what he plays, he was first team all Big Ten. And Trajan Langdon fouled. But Bell was right with him on that play. And how about Duke in the final four? Most wins, let's run them down. UCLA at top with Duke tied with Indiana and Carolina for the total of 11 overall. That's a two on Bell, by the way, Billy, that last foul. If that really hurts. That brings Kelly probably into the ball game here quickly. Tom Izzo forced to make some changes. Battier, three. Good job by Smith. Oh, how about that? Oh, Fallon Hudson, who ran over Battier. You're looking, the man that draws the charges set all kinds of records last year with 29 charges for Duke. That's the 36th time he has created a turnover for an opponent this year by drawing a charge. You really have to be aware of a six foot eight man's presence. It's not like he sneaks up on you. Battier's 36 charges taken is a Duke record, breaking a mark he set last year as a freshman. And another whistle. Holding away from the ball and maybe a fortunate foul for Michigan State because Avery had turned the corner. Thomas Kelly whistled for that. That's five fouls on Michigan State in the first three minutes and 16 seconds. Well, I, I'd like to point out to you that Duke has shot 380 more free throws than their opponents this year. And they've made more than the other. Has uh, even shot. That's right. That's right. Duke has not been whistled for one to this point. Carowell bounces it over. Those hands by Brand, enormous hands. Doubled up. Avery able to spin away. Oh, it comes up short. short. Leaves. Pass to Hudson and one. That's Brand from behind. Great job by Mateen Cleaves. Penetrates extremely well. Michigan State has everybody on that break and they can run. We see Brand gets caught trailing. Nobody stops the ball penetration of Cleaves and there's Peterson who is a great finisher. As is Hudson. Not a lot of players would have given that one up at the last second. Cleaves though. The first to tell you, scoring is not my thing. Running this team is. But Jim, the team has that ability to accelerate and then stop quickly, so he's almost always under control. A.J. Granger, he made the all Midwest team in St. Louis with his play against Kentucky, where he had 14 points and buried three out of three threes. Uh, Jim, he's nine for his last 13 shots in the NCAA tournament. That's traveling. Pretty good defense by Peterson that time. Duke getting away from what started out to be a very good idea, and that's getting that ball down inside to Brand. Coach K with 47 wins in the NCAA tournament, which ties him with Dean Smith for second most ever behind John Wooden. Good offensive set here. Avery trying to keep the ball out of Cleve's hands. Not successful. So far, Michigan State forcing Duke to play half court at a time, which is what Tom Izzo would like. Cleaves outside, buries his first shot. It's a three. And Jim, we're talking about a guy that in that phase of his game can be very inconsistent. So huge shot right there for Michigan State. Avery slides right past him for an easy two. Cleaves was looking to see if somebody was going to set a solid screen when he turned his head. Avery took advantage. To see how quickly Duke likes to score. And if you're Michigan State, you want him to work on defense in the half court. Cleves comes back on Avery. Tough pass, but he got it right there. Smith rejected by Brand. And a timeout on the floor. So after a, after a skittish start by Michigan State, they recover. Devils lead at the first break by three. Duke leads 11-8. Duke with 31 consecutive wins, a school record. But an NCAA tournament all-time win percentage. Look at the Devils. Tops. 
And that includes Mike Krzyzewski's 47 and 12 record. This is eight Final Four championships in 1991 and 92. And some nice runs by Vic Bubis and Bill Foster as well. Two other Duke coaches that took teams to the Final Four. Michigan State and Duke meeting on this floor for the second time. They actually played in a second round game back in 94 here. Morris Peterson's basket rattles out. Corey McGetty in the ball game now. Brand sits down. Burgess in the ball game as well. McGetty is so quick. McGetty leaves Peterson on the floor. Burgess with the putback. And McGetty in traffic comes out with it. Burgess can't believe he didn't finish that one off. Now, McGetty is one of the most explosive players that's come onto the college scene in a long, long time. Mike Krzyzewski gradually put him in the lineup. He was averaging 15 minutes a game, now up to 17. But this young man can take it to the basket. Andre Hudson now has two fouls. And the freshman from Bellwood, Illinois, hits the first. And Duke, as I said, uh, goes to that free throw line time after time, even though they're the aggressor in most games. And see if they pick up full court on a made free throw. Getty gets them both. Here they come, trying to get a trap started. But it's tough to trap this young man right here. The team please one of the best. Ranger posted up inside. Battier fights over the top. Nice job. Setting some real solid screens down on the baseline. Peterson from the corner. Cajun Langland take it down slowly, looking maybe to get off a three-point shot on the semi-break. Langdon, long range. Really was on fire last week. Yeah, but he wasn't set for that jump shot, Jim. It seems like he's a little impatient wanting to get his shot off here. Made nine out of 12 threes at the Meadowlands in the East Regional games. Where he was the MVP. 24 and 23 points in those two games. And this is after coming off some injury to his foot that kept him out of ACC play. State turns it over. Brand back. UConn advanced earlier. 64-58. Trajan Langdon's going to sit. Johnny Dawkins, uh, Duke's all-time leading scorer and one of the great guards. And he talked about that 86 team. Goes over to talk to him a little bit. Try to settle him down. Say the shots will come. Just be patient. Brand goes back in there with Granger. Granger's got his hands full. They need to double down. Brand muscles his way in for two more. He has eight. Peterson beats him down. Oh, good block by Burgess. And Duke comes out. Nope, Kelly had it. Then Burgess to James. Look how quick Duke gets it going. Good judgment by Burgess to get it back out. Now for the first time, Smith down inside. Tough shot, McKetty. And Smith lost control of it. Burgess to James. Burgess coming up, Jim, on both ends of the floor with some big plays. Tom Izzo can't believe it, and he says, guys, we all got to crash inside. We talk about Michigan State's toughness. Right now, Duke is out toughing them. And getting every loose ball. Absolutely. Bad sign if you're Michigan State. <laughs> 17 to 8. Blue Devils, Connecticut advancing to the final. Duke's 31 game winning streak. Jim, in that first game, Michigan State out rebounded Duke 41 to 25. So nothing jumps out you more here than watching this early action to see Duke just absolutely beating them to the ball on all loose balls and on most rebounds. And much was made out of Michigan State's advantage with offensive rebounds, 25 to 5 from that first meeting, although the doubles weren't missing a whole lot of shots to rebound. McGetty on Peterson now. It's an 8-0 run for the Devils. Not giving Granger any open looks. 
can see the scouting right now down to six. Kelly's going to have to make a move by himself. Kelly and cleaves inside, brings it back out, sets up Kelly from the corner. Nice job offensive rebounding. Now, if they're going to send their guards inside like that, you watch Duke get some easy baskets here because you can't have two guards on the, on the offensive glass. Nobody in the backcourt to stop the fast break. Avery stolen by Peterson and retrieved by Smith. They got the numbers, so they push it up. Cleaves outside, Granger, he hit these last week. Short on that one. This is the game Duke likes to play. McGinney, and one. This is not what Michigan State wants to get into some kind of running battle with this team, particularly with McGinney on the floor. He just explodes. We're talking about a freshman here that can take it to the basket. Early in the season, he went under control a lot of times in the break. You're just not going to cut him off with his power, strength, leaping ability, and strong hands to finish. The foul on Granger, the seventh team foul. They're already in the bonus. One shot for Maggetti. He debuted, started the season against Fairfield of Connecticut at 17 in his first game, and he hasn't hardly let up. There's a most points by a Duke player in a debut since Billy McCaffrey had 22 his first game back in 89. Devils, they've doubled them up. Duke has not trailed in this game. They lead by 10. Jim, that storied conference we talked about uh, with the ACC having such an outstanding record in the NCAA. They've had seven ACC teams that have gone undefeated in the conference. Of those seven teams, 1957, North Carolina won a national championship. 1974, North Carolina State won a national championship. And the others, the answer was no. So Duke's trying to do something that two of their predecessors have accomplished. Well, for the second time this season, they have jumped all over Michigan State early. Not quite as severe for State as it was back in December. But nonetheless, down 10, just eight and a half into the game. Carrowell now on Cleves, the taller man. And Carrowell can play a lot of different positions defensively. Good fake. Peterson short. Hudson follows it up, though. There's that offensive rebounding. Grand thought he had the rebound. Hudson went right in front of him. Nobody blocking out. Trajan Langan not yet able to get started offensively. Michigan State doing a much better job with Smith down inside on Brand. He just gets enough power to stay with him. Double up on Carrowell. And Brand takes it away from Smith. Cleaves oh. reaches in, and he touched it last. How strong do you have to be to take the ball wow. away from those hands? How strong do you have to be to recover from the collision with Eduardo Nahara? And as come he back. did last week and come back into the game. He said he had a slight headache the next morning. I had a headache just watching yeah. it. Brand lost it, handle, he doesn't do that often. On the floor. They tried to call a timeout, but they didn't have possession of the ball, so they couldn't call it. Battier, they say, you're out of bounds. Michigan State ball. You can hear the Duke players hollering, timeout, timeout. Now, that works if your teammate has possession of the ball, but it was loose. Michigan State making a nice little comeback here. Not letting Duke get in a big spurt. Michigan State learned something about coming all the way back last week against Kentucky, down 13. Inside, Granger unable, or, yep, the Michigan State up unable to finish, and a whistle. Cleaves on a reach in. Duke early on, Jim, getting themselves a building up a big margin on the foul line. Tonight on CBS, Martial Law after the Final Four, starring Sammo Hung and Arsenio Hall after the game tonight on CBS. Martial Law. So one and one, Avery. Excellent free throw shooter off to the side. And if Michigan State can start converting on their half court set, they're doing a pretty good job keeping this game in a half court pace. Second jumper of the day for Mateen, nothing there. But Smith is there. He should try it again. Wide open this time. Too strong. And Brand 
Picks up his fifth rebound. The way Michigan State sends guys to the boards, I'm really surprised Duke is not releasing somebody and on the floor right now, a guy like Trajan Langdon. Avery. Out to Klein. Good Ahead rebound. to Cleves. Will he challenge Langdon? Nope. Peterson. And there he is, their leading scorer and their sixth man. And Jim, one of the things Michigan State is doing a good job, when they do have the break, they're not walking the ball down the floor. They're trying to run on Duke when available. Get some cheap baskets. And that switch bringing Smith back over to Grand has taken away one of Duke's big offensive weapons. Langdon has not scored. Carowell underneath. Hudson gave up the baseline. Nobody to help. There's the big man running. Smith. Great pass. Elton Brand oh, sleep at the switch there. He's going to come out. Mike didn't like that one. Great job by Antonio. 22 16 Duke. Oh, good fake. Battier. Hudson. Oh, that was a huge call traveling. Hudson standing there with two fouls. And Smith converting. Jim, that's just good hustle on the part of Smith. He's playing down one end of the floor and he just beats his man down court. Michigan State hanging in there. What coaches have wanted to do all tournament against this Duke team, see what they'll do if they have to play in a close game. This is what the Spartans did so effectively last week, even though they fell behind 13 to Kentucky. Eventually, they settled, settled the game down to their type of game, half-court game, didn't they, Billy? Absolutely. Hudson fading away. Very tough shot. Burgess, another big play. Bell has done a fine job on Trajan Langdon, just not giving him any looks from the outside. McGetty on the climb. Wow, no call. McGetty put back. McGetty just seems to power his way to the basket. There was no opening right there for the drive and made it anyway. Seven points for McGetty. Pretty good screen by Klein. Leaves lost it. Langdon ahead to McGetty. Forget about it. Jim, that's what is available for Duke. If their guards are going to go inside to penetrate and try to rebound, then there is nobody back for defensive balance. Duke finally released somebody. Back to a 10-point Duke lead, matching the largest of the game. Big hedge move by Burgess, a little give and go by Michigan State. Leaves in traffic and a foul outside, a reach in. A reach in foul called against Burgess. Jim, we're seeing some very good backdoor cuts by Michigan State. Their guards and the forwards, but if McLean is inside, if Leaves is inside, you release a man, you got a break. You cannot give up cheap baskets if you're going to play against Duke. Now, here's a guard for Michigan State. Here's a guard for Michigan State. Look at the area out here. Nobody in defensive balance. And watch what happens for Duke on the transition basket. There's the steal. Nobody back for defensive balance. Off goes McGetty. An easy two. If a guard's going to penetrate on the inside, the other guard has to shift to the top of the key. Ranger is back. Duke with a school record 31 game win streak. Michigan State with a school record 22 game win streak. What we'll give here in St. Pete. Michigan State shooting only 30% from the field thus far. Doug Davis is in at the point. It Cleves is on the bench. Good cut inside by Peterson and there's Battier with a great block. Ahead, McGetty, they let him too much. Not a good idea. Now, what's really interesting in this situation, we'll see Battier, the tremendous defender that he is, go right up there, the ball on the way up, good, good hands. And there's uh, Duke setting up their trap that we showed you, the 1-3-1 full court trap. Davis bounced it off the back of Bell's leg, but recovers. Duke adjust from a 1-3-1 zone full court back into their half court man-to-man. -man. 
Take some work defensively to do that as a team. Smith inside. Beautiful. Good footwork. Mike Krzyzewski just trying to get some minutes out of Burgess now to keep Grand out of foul trouble and rested. Requiring Smith to play as he does an awful lot of minutes. Oh, what a crossover. Avery trying to get it in the lane, right back to him. Maggette at three. So far, the Duke team is not hit from the outside, primarily because Langdon hadn't been touching it much. He's got that one. And for Langdon, his first points of the night. Michigan State's done a pretty good job, Jim, defensively against the three-point shooting of Duke. Duke one out of five from three. Oh. Peterson, good shot. Oh, good shot. What a soft touch. At the last moment, he wanted to pass it and was forced to take it. And you have to be so careful when you penetrate like that because of Battier, who not only can block shots, but draws those charges. A little two-man game here. Avery loves to penetrate and kick out to Trajan Langdon. Adie Smith on him. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> and you know, Smith is not a shot blocker. He stays on the ground. So Battier probably in the scouting report understood that. So just put it up through his face. He's a position defender, is Smith. Peterson it, knows he can take Burgess. He's, he's a lot quicker. About it. He's yep. a lot quicker. Push off call on Burgess. Get inside the final four with box scores, team stats, and recaps in the game center only at cbs.sportsline.com or on America Online. Enter keyword CBS Sports Line. Brand returns. He has eight points, seven rebounds. And Smith goes out. So you've got a rested Brand in the game. You have for Michigan State the one guy that can guard him going out. So look for Duke to go down inside to Brand now. Well, they're not giving Granger any open shots, are they? Just had that one three Absolutely. that he misfired. Kentucky let him post up out there, and Duke saw those films, and they're not going to give any open threes. Oh, Battier on Cleese. Cleese wants to take him one-on-one. -on -one. Nice, nice job. switch. Yeah, sure was. Smart play by those two guys. Ten on the shot clock. Well, Elton Brand is guarding Granger like he's the best outside shooter in the country. Watch Cleves. Whoop. Ball is kicked. Put it all back on the clock. They should reset yep. it. They do. Sure does. Well, we go to the third straight break with the Blue Devil margin 10 over Michigan State. And there he is, martial arts superstar Sammo Hung, watching his first ever basketball game live. Sammo of martial law. He'll have his show on tonight after the game right here on CBS. These two have watched a few wow. games, though. How about that? 1975, they faced each other in Coach Wooden's last Final Four. Coach Wooden winning the semifinal game with, against Louisville. Coach he was pupil. Yep. Oh, right there. Denny Crum is a valuable assistant during some of those national championship years. Denny, of course, winning the national crown twice against, one time, against his very Duke club in 86. Here's Granger in the corner, baseliner, and too strong. Well, what a rebound by Brand, right in between two good rebounders, Peterson and Hudson. Michigan State not getting that bench production it's been getting all tournament long. No, they aren't, but they're being well defended and well scouted. Granger's not getting any real open looks. I think Duke ought to go into Brand now with Smith out of the ball game. There's nobody going to guard him down in low by themselves. Here he is. Look at that move. Comes up short, and snaring it there is Granger. What Elton do should hear is, is get the ball inside and pop it out. There's Granger's shot that he's been hitting all tournament. Just can't get it to drop today. Looked like 
Langdon may have gotten away with a palm. Well, as long as the ball's on top of the ball, even if it's a strange-looking dribble, that one was okay. You know, Trajan Langdon's been slipping a lot, Jim. I don't know if it's the floor or his sneakers. Battier, top of the key. Elton Brand taps it. Nice play there by Peterson to prevent two. Brand just trying to keep it alive for himself. Coming up, pins oil at the half with Greg and Clark and Utah head coach Rick Majerus. First half analysis, plus they'll be joined live by Jim Calhoun as the Yukon Huskies have advanced to the championship game. That's all coming up on Penn's Oil at the half. Jim, Sean Battier taking a lot of threes. Now, at one point in his career in 98, he missed 20 straight three-point shots. Duke right now, their patented three-point shooting just one for six. They've got to have the right guy shooting the threes to get on track there. And it's not Battier, it's this guy right here. Avery, and look at that rebound by Kelly. Avery gets back on defense, but Kelly beats him. Kelly needs some help. Oh, look at Avery. Almost gets away with it. Wow. And you know what a good defensive play that is if you can be quick enough to go around the team, please. But Duke really having a problem on something is one of their real weapons, and that's outside three-point shooting. And the way that they've extended these large margins in the tournament is being very prolific in that area. But that lead has been at 10 for the bulk of this game, never above 10. Ranger turnaround, spins out, and Brand is having some kind of rebounding game. That's 10, 10 rebounds already. Double team Good up and it's Mateen Cleaves who reaches in. Good smart play by Mateen Cleaves. Peterson, all there. And Mike Krzyzewski not happy with his offense. Gets the timeout even though he might have had numbers, Jim, to show you that he, yeah. he has a real game plan in mind there. Well, we had Ohio State from the Big Ten in game one, Michigan State in this one, and in the 90s, now ACC delivering two teams to the Final Four, 90 and 91. SEC did it back to back, well, 94 and 96, I should say. And, and of course, Jim, probably never before in 91, we had UNLV coming in with that undefeated powerhouse nobody thought anyone could beat, and Duke pulled off one of the great upsets in Final Four history. For in-depth tournament stats, go to cbs.sportsline.com. You talked about Michigan State's rebounding advantage in the first game between these two. They're down 10 to Duke in this one, rebounding-wise and score-wise. And what's balancing that off, Jim, is that Duke is not shooting well on the perimeter. So they're controlling the boards but not doing anything on the perimeter. Michigan State goes a little zone there. Pass to Batty, and there they break the ceiling. It's up to 12 for the first time in the game. Nice time out by Mike Krzyzewski. They went zone. Duke getting away when Brand gets the ball. He's got to be looking to pass because they're doubling down on him. Trajan Langan on Peterson, giving up a little size here. Spartans have gone four and a half minutes without a point. They can't hold it until the end. Mattier sitting down defensively. Three on the shot clock, Sleeves. And Duke can take one shot. Coach K signals for it. Now, watch for penetration by Avery. Trajan Langdon wiping his shorts, saying, penetrate and kick it out to me, and I'm going to drill one. And Kelly better really have his mind set on this. And you can see Michigan State not wanting to get that ball to Avery, but too late. Seven seconds, Avery surveying. Avery between two defenders puts it up. Bran has another rebound in time, but it doesn't go. Not really what they wanted, Jim. Too hard a shot by Avery. I'm surprised he didn't kick it out. But Duke dominates the first half here. 32 to 20. Not pretty, however. I mean, you don't hit the perimeter shots. You got to do a lot of struggling. They did their struggling off the boards and were very effective there. All right, let's go over to Armin Katayan. Armin? 
Thank you, Jim. I'm with Quinn Snyder, the associate head coach at Duke. Certainly not your most impressive game inside, offensively or outside, but great defensive pressure. Yeah, well, Elton had some success inside. You know, they're, they're a real physical defensive team, and, and they've taken us out of our stuff. They're switching stuff on the perimeter, so we haven't gotten a lot of touches, and it's, and it's been hard to score, but we're, we're playing pretty good defense, too. All right, thanks, Quinn. Jim? All right, at the end of the first half, the score, Duke 32, Michigan State 20. And CBS Sports' exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship continues after this message and a word from your local station. CBS Sports' exclusive coverage of the NCAA Men's National Semifinal Game is sponsored by Volvo, Nike, American General, and by Goodyear. 